Okay, so this is my Pi 400, and uh, I did a video a while ago because the SD card slot doesn't hold the card in. Well, I figured I'd take it apart. I've been meaning to take it apart for ages, uh, and uh, I took it apart last night. Now, to take it apart, you really just need to get something like a thin bit of plastic in between, and then you're pushing apart. Uh, now, I used a small table knife, so I've got a few, well, one little mark there. Uh, once you've got a little bit open, you just get your nail in and just, just sort of push it open, uh, and, it, and it all comes apart. Now, this ribbon you need to be careful of, and you need to make sure that you flip this up and then take it out and you can flip it back down again. Uh, and then you have four screws, uh, which is here. And then once you've taken those four screws out, it still doesn't come out. And uh, what you need to do is, uh, well, I mean, do this at your own risk, but uh, there is a sticky pad here. And I've actually got uh, a sticker, you know, like you get that sort of paper that uh, is, is non-tacky. And I've put it over there because this is like a, a thermal pad which sticks to the CPU. And uh, so that bit's the trickiest bit to get off. And I was just kind of twisting it a little bit and pulling it because uh, it does put a little bit of bend on the board when you're doing it. So be really careful with that. So, and that's the heat sink. And then this board, there's two little clips here and you just bend them outwards and then it flips up like that. And here we now have the board. And you can see now uh, how much room there is underneath for the venting. So uh, there's a little bit of venting there and obviously a lot of the heat goes up through the CPU uh, into that heat sink. But, uh, but yeah, I really love the way it comes apart. The fact that it was just four little screws, everything feels really nice and solid. Uh, it, is, it is really well made. So let's have a look at this card slot. Now I need to get as close as this as possible, but I was sent a picture from Ugiltrom M on, uh, on YouTube. So I had a device which had an SD card and after a while of removing, popping in and out, it also showed this weakness of the card springing back up no matter what I did. After trying again and again and again, somehow it would stay in locked as normal. So I opened the device and bent the small tab of metal on the slots casing such that it bent a little further in in the casing, allowing the lock mechanism to work as intended. The image has uh, a weird arrow on it. And so this is obviously the same, looks very similar. In fact, it looks, it looks pretty much identical uh, where everything is. So it seems to be this little tiny line here, uh, and maybe that needs to be bent inwards. Uh, because interestingly, if I do this, I push down on this bit with my nail. So that's held in now. It doesn't look like it's held in, but if I let go, you can see it shoots the card out. So it is, it's something to do with that little line going in. So I get that. Let's try and get the camera a bit closer. Okay, so it's closer now. So I'm guessing it's this bit of wire here that goes in, in this angle. So not this sort of L-shaped, bigger, thicker bit. It's this bit under here, but actually, it's so tight, I don't see how I'm going to get in there to move that across. If I look in here, I can't really make it out very well. Yeah, it's really hard to see. And I've tried this with better light and stuff like that, and it, it just, it's, I don't know if that will, yeah, you can't, you can't really tell. So somehow I need to get that bit of metal across, and I need something really thin, and I think I'm going to use... Um, the, the little iPhone SIM ejector, I think that might slot in there. Now, so if I mess this up, I'm not really worried um, because I can use an SD card in a USB adapter and I've got USB boot and SD and SSD drives and all that, so it's not really too much of an issue. Um, so it's this bit and needs to go across. It is so unbelievably tiny. I'm almost tempted to bend this up to get in there and then bend it back down again. It is just so small. So this SIM ejector I consider to be a small, thin device is still way too thick. It won't go in there. Uh, and I need to get somehow get that across. Maybe a, uh, maybe a sharp knife, the end of a sharp knife might do it, a modeling knife or something like that. So let's pop that in and hold. And let's get a little knife in there, so it's that bit there, and twist it. Just give it a little twist. 
Right, and let's have a, oh, he's there. That's it, that's fixed. Yeah, I'm staying in, let's try some more cards. So I have a load of micro SD cards, loads and loads of them. Uh, so let's try a few others just to see that that's definitely working. Yeah, as simple as that and it's fixed. That's amazing. So thanks very much for that tip. That is great. Uh, you do need something super thin to get in there. Um, but uh, but yeah, I think I'm there. Yeah, it's definitely working now. Definitely working fine. Uh, so I think we're gonna put it all back together again. Actually, instead of putting it all back together again, uh, let's just plug it in as is. Uh, so I've got the SD card in, I've got the power, I've got the HDMI, and I've got an ethernet cable. Let's switch on my plugs. Yeah, that's all booted up fine. Okay, so I hope this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.